In this video, we're going to talk about conservative vector fields. This is part of my larger playlist on vector calculus. The link to that playlist is down in the description. Now, some fields like electric fields or gravitational fields have a really, really nice property that we're going to call being conservative. Now, when I take this ball and I move it around on some complicated path, the work done by the force of gravity on the ball, it only depends on the endpoints, the differences in the height. So for example, if I start it up here and I move it down here, that difference in height is proportional to the work done by the force of gravity on this ball. It turns out, it doesn't matter whether I just go straight down or whether I go straight down and up and around in some big path and end up in the same spot. All that matters for the force of gravity and the work done is this difference between the height at the beginning and the height at the end. Now, the force of gravity, if I just sort of look around where I'm standing here, points effectively just straight down. And so I'm going to model that with this field, f of x, y, just minus j hat. So that's a, a field that is pointing just straight down. Of course, the field lines look a bit more complicated if you were to zoom out to a sort of solar system view of the force of gravity, but around me, straight down is a pretty good model. Then I'm going to imagine that we take this path in the force of gravity. It's a path that goes from part A to point B, and point A and B both happen to start at the same height of, of zero in the way that I plotted it. So here's the point. The work done along this path is the exact same thing with a completely different path, or yet again, a third path. So here is our actual definition. We are going to define whether a field is conservative. And then the definition is that it is conservative on an open region if the line integral, the integral along the curve C of f dot dr, is the same regardless of the path that you take between two points A and B. So if you fix the A and you fix the B, you can take any path that you want between the A and the B, and that, that line integral is going to be exactly the same. If you interpret the line integral in terms of work, that would be saying that the work is path independent, which we know it is for the force of gravity. Not all fields are conservative. For example, if I imagine paddling on a body of water and the water has some sort of velocity field in it, then the path that I take as I paddle, it's going to affect this line integral, which we've previously interpreted as flow. For example, if I go off in some weird spot and then around a whirlpool a hundred times and then onto my point B, that's going to be different than if I went directly to my point B, or at least it could be depending on the velocity field. But some fields are conservative. And what's particularly nice is that the fundamental forces of physics, whether it's gravity or the electromagnetic force, both of those give conservative fields. And so conservative fields are not just powerful and interesting, but common. So let's return to the toy example of gravity that I was doing, this field being minus j hat. And then I'm going to take a completely arbitrary curve, r of t, going from g of t up to h of t, where I haven't specified what those curves are actually going to be because I'm going to allow them to vary. I want a conservative field where this could be anything. So let's actually compute out what the work is going to be or what the line integral is in this case. This was our definition of it. We have seen a few different formats of this. I've also seen f dot t ds as opposed to f dot dr. It doesn't matter which of those versions you do. Either way, when you want to compute it with a specific parameterization r of t, the version of the formula you have to use is the one that is in terms of t, the integral from a up to b, which are t values of f of r dotted with r prime dt. Well, I can compute this because I know what the f is and I know what the r is. So plugging that in, the f is the vector that's 0 in the i hat and then minus 1 in the j hat. So I'll just write it in shorthand as 0 and minus 1. And then I'm dotting it with dr dt, or r prime, which is just the derivatives component-wise. So the first component is g prime and the second component is h prime. Compute out the dot product and you get the integral from a up to b of negative h prime of t dt. Now, here is the key moment. The Integral of a derivative is something that we know from the fundamental theorem of calculus. Indeed, when you integrate a derivative, you just get the endpoints. This is therefore going to be negative, so I got a negative in there, of h of b minus minus, so plus h of a. That is, this integral, it only depended on the endpoints. And so this is showing that this field is indeed conservative because it doesn't matter what the g of t and h of t is, as long as they have the same endpoints. If they have the same endpoints, if they have the same endpoints, then this line integral evaluates to something that only depends on those endpoints. It doesn't matter how it gets there in the middle. This field is conservative. So zooming back out to our picture, because the a and the b, they actually started at the same y value, they both started at zero the way I plotted it, that is that my 
h of a and my h of b is both zero. So in this specific example, the work done moving where I sort of take the ball up and down but leave it at the same height at the end is just zero. And likewise, if I do just a straight line path, it wouldn't matter at all. So this then leaves us with the question, well, what fields are conservative? And if you don't mind, I'm going to slightly spoil the answer ahead of time because it's going to let us tell our story over the next few videos in the playlist just a little bit better. The answer is that a continuous field F is conservative precisely when it can be written as the gradient of some scalar function, some potential function is the fancy terminology we often use it, the gradient of a potential function little f. And this is an if and only if, so the vector field able to be written this way implies conservative and vice versa. So I'm leaving the statement here without any attempts to prove it or justify it yet. In the next video though, we're going to really see perhaps the most important part about line integrals is called the fundamental theorem of line integrals. That and more coming up on our playlist. So if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like. If you have any questions about the video, leave it down in the comments below and we'll do some more math in the next video.